Let's read part three together because it's a mouthful. At the harbour entrance, the difference between the water level at high tide and low tide is also six metres. What are they saying? Uh, it looks just like this. It's doing this up down in the same way. It's got the same range. Okay. However, tides at the harbour entrance occur an hour earlier than the wharf. So it takes some time for the wave to actually reach and change and all that kind of thing. Right? In order for the ship to be able to sail through the shallow harbour entrance, the water level must be at least two metres above the low tide level. Question, what is two metres above the low tide level? Low tide is four, so two metres above that is six. And I'm going to, that seems like important information, I'm going to pop that onto my graph. Something like this. There's my safe level, okay? The ship takes 20 minutes to sail from the wharf to the harbour entrance, and it must be out to sea by 7 a.m. What is the latest time the ship can leave the wharf? Okay, now I started out this question by saying, hey, can you help me write down? Let's just look at every piece of information and write everything down, down that's important, okay? In this case here, everything is also important, but it starts to get lost in the fog of, oh my goodness, it goes somewhere, it has to, it's earlier, you have to change time zones, that kind of thing. So something that will be really important is to say, I just did part one and two, and now it's part three. They clearly want me to use the stuff that I worked out earlier to solve this, right? Now, the equation that they went to all the trouble for us to prove was the water depth where? Where is it? Look at the question, read carefully. It's the water depth at the wharf. There it is, right there, okay? But now suddenly, we have to think about the water depth at the, where is it? The harbour entrance. So these things are going to be slightly different. But since I have gone to all the effort of using, you know, creating this equation and using it, I'm going to think about this situation and then all the other stuff with regard to time, I will take into account afterwards. That is not the only way you have to do this, you can do this question. You could adjust and have a whole new equation for the time at harbour entrance, but a lot of people, you just, it's very confusing. So let's use the equation we already have and try and work out the time afterwards, okay? so. Part three, oh, wrong car. Let's start this out. Safe water depth is six meters. So just like I did before, I'm going to go ahead and find when is the water at the, at the wharf going to be that six meters. Just like I worked it out for when it's going to be 8.5, okay? Now it's gonna start exactly the same way. Seven plus three cos four pi t on 25 equals six. I'm gonna write that down, but then I'm going to skip forward a little bit because I think you guys can come up with this answer uh, what did I just say? Six. Once you go ahead and go all the way through, you get to... Um, hmm. I'll write this part. Dot, dot, dot. Do I have negative... Yeah, it's negative a third. Okay, so... After some simplifying, you get to here. Unfortunately, unlike a half, this is not an exact value, so you're going to have to reach for your calculator to get an answer out, okay? Should I be in degrees or radians? I should be in radians. There are at least two obvious reasons why you can know radians. Anyone want to give me one of them? Say it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calculus, thank you. When we're doing motion, simple harmonic motion and projectile and straight line, it's part of the super topic applications of Calculus to the physical world. So, you know, uh, we haven't done it in this question, but we differentiate, we integrate, you've got to be in radians. There's one other big flashing clue that should be in radians. Ta da! There he is, right? That kind of signals to you, right? So I'm in radians. When you go and make sure your calculator is in that mode and you press shift cos, you're going to get something for this. Has anyone got it? Anyone got the angle that you get? I think you should be getting one point. 9, 1, something or other from memory. Can someone confirm that for me? Yeah, are you happy? Okay, so you got there. This is cos inverse of negative a third, okay? But of course, that's not t. It's, um, it's this stuff with t. So I'm gonna have to multiply through by the appropriate number like this. Okay, so this gives us a value. Can someone find that value for us? <laughs> yeah, three point. Eight, zero, zero, dot, 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 dot. Okay, now. This graph has served its purpose. You can see where I'm trying to get to, so I'm going to get rid of it now. Now, what does this tell us? 
This tells us when the wharf depth is going to be at the six meters, okay? But I actually need the six meters to happen somewhere else at the harbor entrance. So if this is, if this is a time, what time does it represent, if that's in hours, what time is it on the clock? Three hours and, this is three hours and 48 minutes, I think. So, so this is counting from 2 a.m., I go forward into the future, right? So at, what is that? 5.48? At 5.48 a.m. Now I'm gonna use words here, okay? Words take a long time to write, but they clarify what's happening and they help me know what to do next, okay? At 5.48 a.m., the wharf has a six meter water depth. That's what we just went and worked out. This equation that we started with was at the wharf, and I said I want it to be six. That's what's happening. Now go look at the question again. What is the relationship between the wharf's time and the harbour entrance's time? Read carefully. Hmm. Second sentence. Can you read it with me? However, tides at the harbour entrance occur one hour earlier than at the wharf. So 548, it's six meters at the wharf. But this happened an hour ago at the harbor entrance where it really matters. So what time is an hour ago? 448. Right? This is not the wharf anymore, this is the harbor entrance, which is where I'm actually interested in. Okay, so now I know when it happens there, but it takes me some time to get to the harbor entrance, right? I leave and I can't leave at this time. By the time I get there, it's over. How long does it take me to get there? Read the question. Last sentence, isn't it? No, second last, sorry, before the actual question. The ship takes 20 minutes to get there. If I want to reach the harbor entrance at that time, because that's the last moment it's safe, I have to leave 20 minutes earlier than that, right? So I can say, therefore, ship, whoops, that's a funny S, ship must leave, what's 20 minutes earlier than that? 4.28 a.m. That's a really bad L, there we go. Okay. Have we answered the question? Looks okay to me. Um, I haven't just provided a, a time in terms of hours. I've actually looked at the time on the clock. Uh, does it meet all the conditions required? Because there actually was one piece of information in the question that I haven't referred to up until now. There's a 7 a.m. Now, why do you think they put that in there? The ship must leave, it must be out to sea by 7 a.m. What difference does that make? Yes, when we have a look over here, right? Do you remember we had to talk about the earliest solution? Because there's not just that solution, there are other ones that happen later on. There will be times later that it can leave, but if we have a look at the next time we get a solution, it's gonna be, well, way after 7 a.m. So all that 7 a.m. domain restriction is about is to lock you into the earliest time. Does that make sense? Now, exhale. Have a look at the working that's on the board. How hard is this? How would you rate this on a scale from 1 to 10? Is this the hardest stuff that you do? I, I don't think this is anywhere close to the hardest stuff that you do. Some of those integrals, some of those proofs by induction, this, um, proofs that we did in, um, in your just most recent test, some of those make your eyes water compared to this. Like this is, well, apart from the radians, you could do this in year 10, solve a trigonometric equation, okay? But what's hard is all this interpretation, the willingness to look and actually use words and work out how do these times relate to each other. That's why this question was so disastrous, disastrously done at the HSC. Okay? So take the time to read. You must pay close attention to the wording of the question. And um, there's a good chance that somewhere within applications of calculus to the physical world, even if it's not in simple harmonic, maybe it'll be projectile, maybe it'll be exponential growth in K, you will get a question like this and you will need to practice that skill of interpretation. Okay?